All right, guys, welcome to the after chat, and we're going to be talking about why bad things happen. <laughs> it seems so weird to come in upbeat and excited. <laughs> 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 all right let's go all right <laughs> we should leave that in that's the intro for this one <laughs> like it, it seems weird to come in happy saying what that we're getting ready to talk <laughs> we're about to talk about why terrible things happen folks are you ready bro we're gonna talk about evil and suffering yeah <laughs> yeah it's gonna be great all right let's do it <clears throat> That whole man so glad to have everybody with us today uh welcome 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 to the after chat ellis yes most random thing you ever bought um i'm very frugal this is kind of a tough question one time on a student mission trip i bought a very expensive boogie board for a trip to the beach used it for that trip haven't touched it since I it's think in a I, closet somewhere that's like that's like a like a, a rite of passage yeah. for everybody <laughs> that's ever gone to the beach i'm gonna go out and buy this really sick boogie board and then it sits in the garage for the rest of your life. Yeah. How about you? So I, I'm a sucker for the as seen on TV section of mm. of the store of the of the Walmart. I desperately want all of them to re be real and work and and to be everything as advertised. So probably probably my my most random impulse buy would be this mighty putty stuff. Like you would cut off a piece of it, you'd roll it between your fingers to activate all of the secret ingredients in it. And and they, they would show like people pulling trucks <laughs> with what? like with the like with bricks connected with this thing. <laughs> I mean it it was very adhesive and sticky. I ruined so much drywall in my first house. <laughs> like I was like, I'm going to hang so much stuff with this. <laughs> like I was hanging curtain rods. I put up a baby gate for my my, my oldest when she was little and then just destroyed the drywall whenever I was trying to trying to take things down and move it whenever we wanted to update and make things look different. So mighty putty. Mighty um, putty. Yes. The more you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that that's most definitely the most the most random and most unsatisfactory as seen on TV purchase. Mm. If you started a band, what would the band's name be? And what kind of songs would you sing? So going back to seventh grade okay. for this, we, a couple of friends of mine, like we had a dream. We was going to start a band one day. None of us played anything. So like we were the perfect fit uh, to start a band. It was going to be called Life is But a Cheese Curl. Mm. Was going to be, you know, it was the alternative grunge phase kind of, you know, things were going on. Um, so that was going to be the band name. Um, and I think we would just play anything. Yeah. Especially now, like my iPhone music uh collection is is very random like i've got stuff from 90s country to 80s metal to glam rock to all the stuff yeah so you i think it would be a worship band um i think the name would be big and loud i'm a fan of big loud epic up-tempo worship music so there you go that's what we would do yep okay um, with anybody but me as the lead singer, because y'all don't want that. Anyways. Well, what are you playing? Do you play? Uh, Do you have any musical ability? I will play the triangle. Okay. Yeah. That's what I got. Wood block. There you like go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just tick, 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 tick. <laughs> It's like a, it's like just a metronome. You can keep time. That, I would do that. It's an important role. Like, I mean, somebody's got to do it. Yes. All right. One place that you never want to return to and why? Uh, I think I'll go. I, I was debating with two in my head. I think I'll go with Toronto. Um, it was just like kind of dirty and smelly in the one time I went there. I want to apologize on behalf yeah. of the after chat to everybody Sorry. in Toronto. Like, I <laughs> you had, had to pick somewhere. I mean, that was a question. So. Yes. What about yours? Uh, mine's not like a, a city, but there was a gas station that was on a road trip and was coming back uh, from from Indiana. Mm -hmm. And have you ever been someplace where you, you just get a vibe, like that just something is not right? Mm hmm Man, it, it ran <laughs> deep. I got out of there, was like, and I'm a fan of like stop, like usually like the best food 
like is in places like that. Yes. Like, I, I, I've got I've had a tremendous amount of success at stopping at weird rando gas stations and finding awesome food. Like yeah. th- there's this one spot down in North Carolina. Stop at anytime I go down there. You go in there and get alligator bites. Like they're absolutely fantastic. And so you never know. It's hit or miss. But man, went into this one gas station and was just this ain't right. Like the person behind the counter was giving off. I'm, I'm big on vibes. Like I got very sketch vibes in there. Never going back. Yeah. Does Farmville still have the gas station gas station sushi place? Gas station sushi place. Say that three times fast. I I'm not familiar. Oh, um, man. I, I would be very leery of of gas station sushi. Still the best sushi I've ever had. Really? Yep. It was one of my favorite spots in college. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's still there. I have no idea. But if it is, I'll look for it. I'll okay. let you know if it's still there. You got well, you got to check it out. We'll we'll hit it up. Yeah. Worst advice you've ever been given. Oh man. Can you go? I, I need a, I need a minute to turn it over. Everything happens for a reason, and, oh, and for good. and for those of you that that you know, we haven't really done this before. We've got a couple other people here we do. in 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 the studio with us. We got we got Sarah and we got Lenny, mm-hmm. and we was having a little bit of a, a little bit of a kerfuffle almost about reason or cause, and if they're synonymous, if they should be used the same, or if there's if there's a fine distinction between the two. But the worst advice, I don't even know if that's advice. More like a like a like a, saying. like a comforting, like a, a, a saying that's used to, in an attempt to comfort someone, but everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Like, I think that's probably the worst. Y'all were this close to getting just a cell phone video of the two of them <laughs> instead of us sitting here doing this episode because they were, it was intense. Okay. Uh, so my uh, driver's ed teacher or driving instructor, whatever, whatever, whatever it's called in your neck of the woods, um, we were kind of getting ready to go through a yellow light mm-hmm. and it was like it was close you know you could go you could stop and she said and i quote just floor it which is not what you want your <laughs> high school driving instructors to say so i'm gonna go with that just floor it. just floor it okay uh oh, we got we got someone laughing behind the camera the, what, the place called shogun japanese Steakhouse? that one that's it still open hey Where's that at? It is uh, right on Main Street when you yeah. leave, like, th- you go through Longwood completely. Um, and you're, like, you're like halfway between Longwood and Hampton City yeah. before the Lowe's. It's on the right. Okay. If you're heading toward Hampton City. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. We'll check that out. All right. Uh, weirdest injury you've ever had? Um, Because Job, I, we're going to talk about Job in a little bit. He got covered in boils. I don't have anything like that. Can't compete with that one. Job, you win this round. <laughs> I played a lot of youth soccer growing up, and one time, I had various injuries doing that. One time, I went into a challenge for the ball, and the next thing I knew, I was on the ground, and my basically my toenail on my big toe on my right foot was completely gone. And to this day, I have no idea how that happened. Through your shoe? Yeah. Just took my shoe off. My sock was bloody. Took the sock off. No toenail. Was it in the sock still? I didn't find it. (laughs) (laughs) I have no idea. (laughs) Just into the ether. It's a mystery. Okay. That's a raptured toenail. That's a first here on the after chat. (laughs) Um, I mean, mine's, you know, pretty evident to anybody. Flesh eating disease. Hmm. Um. That that's definitely the weirdest <laughs> injury that I've that I've ever had. I don't know if I'll. I mean, knock wood, I never top it. Um, so this isn't wood. Yeah, like a nah, like a four mica quite. type situation. Yeah, that was the closest I could do. Anyways, but you know. appreciate the sentiment was there. I got you. Um, but yeah, flesh eating disease. That's that's definitely mine. Um, I mean that competes with Job pretty well. Like, you know. I mean, I watch think, out, Job. I mean there. I mean there was like. I don't know if they were necessarily boils, but there was large blisters on it when that was uh, when that was going on. Pretty gross. Um, raptured toenail, yep. flesh eating disease, and well, good stuff. Yep. <laughs> so, what's one of the worst things you've ever done? So this, whenever we get into it here in a little bit, this would be an example of somebody suffering because of somebody else's sin. Mm-hmm. I was angry one day whenever I was a little boy, um, and. I kicked a hole in the wall at, uh, at my childhood home and um, blamed it on my sister. And nice. she got in trouble. <laughs> and so, Jamie, if you're watching, <laughs> that, that was my bad. Um, and so... <laughs> 
<laughs> um, confessing sins right here on the after chat. My bad. Authentic in all relationships <laughs> is uh, is what we are here. Um, so yes, that that's definitely probably one of that's one of the worst things. Yeah, I uh, was kicked out of a public establishment for fighting one time. Mom and dad, if you're watching. <laughs> Look, it's been a decade plus. <laughs> I think there's been enough time. Like, we're good. We're yeah. all right. But yes, that happened. I had a life before Jesus, okay? And we're just going to, that's it. We're going to we leave it there. there. Yep. That's good stuff. Yep. We're, we're confessing things. We um, are. And unburdening ourselves. Yes. I and feel lighter already. I, I'm going to, like a meerkat. I'm yeah. going to sit up a little bit, <laughs> you know? Like uh, we mentioned at the top, we're going to be talking about uh, why bad things happen and just general general suffering in the world. Whenever I kind of look at it, I, I kind of put it, break it into four four categories mm-hmm. of there's things that I do that that my sin that causes suffering on both myself and others. Then there we also suffer because of other people's sin. Right. Of the aforementioned uh, confession right there <laughs> uh, to my sister. We suffer because of the re- as a result of other people doing uh, doing wrong. And right. then there's you know natural disasters. Um, diseases and and things like that that just come as a result of living in a broken world yep. and and creation itself not even operating as as was originally intended and then legit spiritual um attack yep. that's and i find that that's kind of a murky area like how do you really define a spiritual attack but what whenever you think of this what what comes to mind for you yeah, I think those those four cover it pretty well. I think it's important for us to say up front that we believe that God doesn't cause bad things to happen. Yes. When we say why do bad things happen, not why is we're not asking why is God causing this bad thing to happen to this person. To the point you made, we believe that we live in a broken world and we broke it. We broke it, not God. And so uh, anything that comes is is kind of a result of our of our failures. And so. I mean, and it's also important to, to note, there's a difference between causing something and allowing something. Right. Like yep. natural consequences of, of behavior. Yeah. And a lot of times people will kind of conflate the two. Like I'm now suffering the, dealing with the results of a bad decision. And they kind of link that as a spiritual attack. Like that's something that does happen a lot. Yeah. Um, but God never promises to uh, stop stop things from happening to us. He does promise to be with us as we walk through them. Yes. And walk with us through them. So, yeah. And so, but that that's just a, a upfront, you know, clarification. The kind of the, param- yeah. the, the parameters <laughs> of where we're going. Yeah. You know, we mentioned that we was going to talk about Job. And I just find the, the, the introduction to that story just absolutely... Um, bananas. And and I struggled with Job. Like whenever I first came to Jesus and, and I was going through a whole bunch of stuff, I, I mentioned some of that in the last episode, and I was just, you know, going through a whole bunch of things and I was just like, I'm just going to go down to the store and buy a Bible. And I went to the bookstore, bought a Bible and just started reading it. And I just jumped into Job yeah. for whatever reason. That's where I kind of landed. And I was just like, this just seems so unfair. And, and like, I, I very much struggled with this, but I found it interesting. Um, Job won uh, verse six. And just to note, if you don't have a Bible, we'll send you a Bible. Like if you just put in, in, in an email or anything else, just reach out to us and just say, Hey, I don't have a Bible. Would love to have, I would love to have a Bible. We'll send them a Bible. You can also get one on your phone. Yep. You version. Free. Yep. There you go. One day the angels come to present, came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord, from roaming through, uh, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Just straight chilling, you know, <laughs> <Yep>. like, <laughs> like I, I just found that, I, I just find that so, so interesting. And then it goes on to say, you know, the Lord said to Satan, have you check out my man Job down there? Yeah. He's just living his best life and he's sacrificing things on, on behalf of his kids just to make, just in case they didn't do it, Job's covering himself and everybody else. And, and he's, he's just a, he's the, just my man down there just chilling. God is like standing on his front porch, looking over his freshly cut grass that Job has just finished up yeah. trimming. That's the, that's the mental picture I yeah. see here. Yeah. Like just <laughs> like, Hey bro, like check out Job right there, you know? <laughs> and, my God, Job. and, and Satan's like, you know, well, He's only he's only worshiping you and and living his best life and doing good because you he he you got him and like you're protecting him take it all away and he'll and he'll curse you mm-hmm. and 
God's like, well, have at it. It's like, okay, you're Get on. Get him. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's a tough thing. Like, that's a very difficult thing just to imagine. Yeah. That, but that's that's how it presents itself. Right. So the first one of the first Bible reading plans I ever did, for some reason, had a chapter from Job and a chapter from Ezekiel every day, and I'm it, which you know. Just on proximity alone, it makes no <laughs> sense. But for a lot of reasons, it makes no sense and was extremely like, what is happening? Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, you know that I just find that that just that that opening kind of interesting, and then all and and then from there, the first the first thing that happens is his house gets blown down, mm-hmm. his livestock gets taken, all of his kids die, and and he's just it's just him and his wife in a broke down home. Yeah. And everybody's come in and looted their stuff. And then he still doesn't curse God. And God, next day comes along, Satan's chilling again, which is just baffling to me, you know, and I think to most people. Yeah. And he says, check out my man Job. Mm-hmm. Like, he's still doing all right. And he's like, well, he ain't suffered enough. Like, <laughs> let's hit him again. And so next thing you know, he's covered in boils. Yep. Cool. And, and, you know, he's like, he's still living a comfortable life because all of that stuff happened, but like nothing's actually happened to him. Right. And so, boom, to connect to our earlier conversation, now he's covered in boils and he's sitting there and he's suffering. So. I wonder what happened to his big toenail. Maybe he got raptured. Maybe. <laughs> but so that's, that's where they kind of, that's kind of where, where things come up. And then we have his three pals that come to kind of. They all want to decide, okay, kind of figure out, all right, why are these bad things happening to Job? Mm-hmm. But just from up to there, what do you what do you got? It's quite the it's quite the setup and quite the intro. And you're right. It's it's almost like a weird biblical social experiment. Like, yes. okay, it's like God and Satan have a bet going on. And it's like, okay, well, sure. We'll we'll test it out. I God's like, I believe in my guy, you're on. I'm I'm gonna I'm going to leave him out on his own, and we'll see how he holds up. Yeah. It's, it's just weird. It's just weird that, that God and Satan are like, yeah, let's just let's watch what's going on down there. Like it may, <laughs> it, 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 but the first time I read it, like, and it's okay to wrestle with these things. Oh, like, yeah. we're, we're all wrestling with, with Scripture. <laughs> Nobody just comes to a piece of Scripture. Like, they always try to figure – I mean, you got to wrestle with it and think about it and just yep. try to figure out how you apply it. But just the, just the setup yep. for that, it, it makes – I mean, it can make you feel like you're just a pawn in something that you don't have any control over. Right. And that's kind of what it gets at here. There's right. things that, that are happening that we, on a different realm of existence, that we honestly have no idea of. So we've got Job and his pals. Like, they now come. They they sit with him for about a week saying nothing. Job's just sitting there scraping his boils. and And then they decide that they're all going to figure out why Job is suffering, mm-hmm. which is kind of what we all do when we hear of somebody going through something bad. Like we start thinking about what did that person do or or cause or karma finally caught up to him. Like mm-hmm. that's a very, you know, something that a lot of people say. Right. But we got we got Eliphaz. He was the first one. And, and Job did nothing in all of this. Like this was just rando acts. Like he's sitting there living his best life and boom, everything's been taken. Eliphaz comes along, Job is suffering because he'd sinned, and his advice is appeal to God and confess to him. And Job's like, dude, I ain't, I ain't done nothing, mm-hmm. you know. And then the Bildad he comes along and he just said, well, it's your pride and ego, and if that's keeping you from confessing, and if you just admit it, you know, you're you're just being obstinate at this point. And Job's like, dude, like I legit ain't done nothing. And then Zophar, the his third pal, and he just said, "Dude, you deserve even more." Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, and that be a that's a terrible thing to say to somebody that's suffering. Not only did you deserve all of this, but you deserved a whole lot more. Right. And from an outside perspective, like that might be the three trains of thought that people take. Right. So I think, kind of what we see going forward from that setup, kind of over the arc of this entire book of the Bible, is moments where. Because of all he's been through, Job could have easily turned against God, but doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, he kind of continues to keep his faith in God. And his and wife so, even said that. Why don't yeah. you curse God and die? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like literally everything is against him. Just a couple out of uh, 
out of a whole bunch that uh, I wanted to point out. A couple moments in Scripture where Job kind of reestablishes or, you know, continues to keep his faith in God. First one is in chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, it says, at least I can take comfort in this. Despite the pain, I have not denied the words of the Holy One. And I think pain can tempt us into all kinds of things mm -hmm. uh, and make us weak, break us down where we're willing to compromise uh, the things that we believe and things that we stand on. Job, despite all he's been through, doesn't, doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is in chapter 13, verse 15, which says, God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I'm going to argue my case with him. And that first part, you know, he he might feel, I think it's easy to read into it and say he feels angry with God yeah. for, for withdrawing and um, not keeping his protection over Job. And for Job, that might be as good as, well, you might as well have killed me, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, he says, I have no other hope. Uh, if I'm going to take this up with somebody, if I'm going to have to go stand face to face with somebody and and talk about what is happening and why it's happening, it's going to be God and nobody else. Mm -hmm. So I think that's pretty cool. Job does. He vents his anger mm -hmm. at God and is like, you know, he's asleep at the wheel mm -hmm. uh, on this whole thing. He doesn't like doubt him like that his existence or anything, but like he, he questions like, and it's okay to ask why. Jesus even asked why at the cross. Yes. You know, so I mean, asking why is completely valid. Yeah. Um, and expressing your anger with God and like saying, God, this sucks. Like, that that that's okay. Like own it. Yeah. Like go to. He already knows what, how you're feeling anyway. So you might as well just go to him with what, with what you've got going on inside. But you know, and but God does answer Job. Yeah. At the end, and basically, I mean, he basically says you. You think I don't have a handle on all of this? Like, you think you could run this for a day? Like, you take this up and go eye for eye on everybody. There's not <laughs> going to be anybody left. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and at the end, Job, he just admits it and says, God, you know what? You're right. I'm just going to put my faith and trust in you regardless of what I'm experiencing and just keep driving forward. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, there's no, there's no real satisfactory answer in, in the book that's entirely dedicated to suffering right um in the bible but the but the one thing that we can take from it at the end is we're not alone in it mm -hmm. god is with us even in the peaks and the valleys you know how it how you know that old chestnut and, right. and so that's that's really the only thing that we can really take from it yeah yeah there's no guarantee of ease or uh avoiding sorrows or pain but having that source and um somebody we can put our trust in and lean on as we go through those things, I think, as what's important for us to take away from this. One of the things that we do have in here is negative examples of what not to do. And mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that the, the Old Testament is riddled with, is negative examples of what not to do. Yes. So don't be like Job's pals. <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah. if you're, if you, if you see your buddy going through something, don't go to them and say, and just start accusing them uh, of it, of, of being the cause of everything that they got going on. Don't tell them that they probably deserve more um, when they're covered in boils and sitting there. But just be with them, carry their board, their burden with them, and direct them towards God, right. uh, regardless of what, what the situation may be. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Closing thoughts on Job. Well, I think it's just a, a study of... Uh, a good case study of how we can approach our, our own sorrows and our own pain. And kind of like I said before, there's no guarantee that it's going to be easy, that God walking through us with it is going to make it easier. Mm -hmm. But um, we do have somebody who will be there of something we can fall back on and somebody who will carry us through, who walk with us through it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then so that's that's kind of a look at somebody in the Bible that wasn't the cause of their own suffering right and so now we've also got we're going to take a look at someone who who caused a, a good deal of their own yeah in in king david yes the the cool thing about david um with this discussion is we can kind of divide it up into two halves of his life because the first half of his life uh as he's kind of going on the journey to become king uh after he's anointed king it's a lot of like um there are hard things he faces, but not necessarily uh, based on his own faults or his yes. own um, shortcomings, but still hard things that mm -hmm. he has to walk through, that God walks through with him. Um, I mean, you have the the previous king, Saul, 
David is anointed. He continues to rise. He uh, gains gains some some fame and some acclaim, and um, Saul is not interested in giving up his throne, and so he gets a little jealous of David, and uh, it, this even escalates to a point where he tries to kill him, and so David multiple has to go on the times. run multiple times. Yeah, so I think you know David up to this point, he all he's tried to do is wait his turn uh, after his anointing and do what God told him to do. And one of those things is to serve Saul, is mm-hmm. to serve Saul well. And so this guy that David is trying to honor and serve well and um, serve under, all of a sudden is insanely jealous and trying to kill him. And then it causes David to go on the run. He literally has to live in a cave for a period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, so to go from like the the peak of being anointed as the next king all the way down to I'm in a cave running for my life uh, is quite the roller coaster. But through it all, we see God walk through it with David, and mm-hmm. David continue to put his trust in God as he goes through it. And, and you read a lot of that in the Psalms. Like a lot yep. of the headers on the Psalms, while David was on the run from from this or while David was camped out here, yeah. um, he took all of his feelings and his frustrations and, and it sometimes his just anger and rage mm-hmm. and just vented them. And then at the end, but I almost a, a good majority of them end with, but I put my faith and trust in you. Mm-hmm. Like, I know that you will see me through. Yeah. And, and so, oh, go on. Oh, I was just going to say it, it kind of illustrates what we were talking about before, which is David's anointed king. He's given this promise. What he's not promised is, an easy road to get there or any detail about the road to get there really. So, and I mean, we see God work that way a lot. I mean, whenever God called Abraham, what was the first thing? Yeah. Go to the land of which I'll show you, Mm -hmm. which basically go South. Yeah. Pack up and go. Yeah. (laughs) And, And so David kind of had something similar to that. And then, you know, like you mentioned before, like we can kind of look at and divide David into pre Bathsheba and post Bathsheba. Yep. And now this is where a whole lot of people suffered as a result of someone else's um, sin. Right. And for those that you don't know, in, in 2 Samuel 11, um, that's the story of David and Bathsheba. Basically, all of the men are out there fighting, and this would be a, a time where the king would usually be out there fighting with him. So David is already not in the place where he's supposed to be, and he's just chilling out on his rooftop and and sees Bathsheba and sins for her, and sins for her, and has relations with her, and um, gets called on it. Yep. Down the road. Yep. Uh, well, he he tries to hide it as yep. well. He tries to hide it first. He. Tries, he calls for Uriah to come back and sends him to go be with his wife. And then he's like, no, nah, dude, I'm going to stay right here and slept outside on the on the ground by the palace. And then David just said, all right, then, and then sent him to the fu- the place where the fight was the thickest and the worst. And that's where Uriah dies. Yeah. Um, and then you have Nathan confront him in uh, chapter 12. And that's a I, I love that story. Like yeah. he goes up there and says. David, you ain't going to believe this. This guy did <laughs> did X, Y, and Z. And David's like, get him. We're going to execute him now. And he's like, dog, that's you. Like, that's. What are you doing? That was you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and and then from that, David uh, repents yep. and, and goes and writes Psalm 51, which has, I mean, I've prayed that many times myself whenever I've done something wrong uh, with to somebody or hurt somebody, uh, you know, unintentionally or, or, you know, just intentionally even. Um, just, I do the same thing. It's become kind of a ritual for yeah. me. When I feel like I messed up pretty bad, I open Psalm 51 and I'll read it out loud. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and just put and just put it all out there. Yeah. And that that's that's a, a very beautiful uh, uh, psalm. Mm-hmm. But there was consequences. Yes. To that. Yes. Forgiveness. But yes. consequences as well. And, and, yeah. and God even promised to be with him while he was going through it. Right. But there there were consequences to his actions. Mm-hmm. And you get all of that with Absalom. And, I mean, there was already probably some family system things that you could probably look at with how he ignored a lot of bad behavior way along the way with Absalom. Right. But there, but there were natural consequences. And Nathan, whenever he went and confronted him, told him like God has forgiven you however mm-hmm. there's going to be a series of things that come along afterwards yep. and and that's something that that we all have to 
we have to be able to take responsibility for our actions. Right. And so we've kind of seen things where David caused suffering to a whole lot of other people around him. We, so that's that's one box. You know, we had Job. That was some spiritual level <laughs> stuff that had nothing to do with anybody. Right. You know, and, and then we had David dealing with the results of his own sins. Um, there's no natural disasters in here, but um, all in, of that could be. In here. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's kind of where, you know, people are broken yeah. and creation is broken. And so, like, all of that's kind of play in these in these two stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think kind of the, what we were talking about at the end there about David is kind of what we can look at as the the common factor through it all. When things go wrong in our lives, whether we mess them up or they happen to us, there's going to be difficult times we have to walk through to get to the other side of it. But even if it is our fault, God's going to be there to walk through it with us. Mm -hmm. So. And, and we'll, we'll come back in a little bit. Yeah. Um, but we do have a message uh, clip from our senior pastor, Brian Hughes, yep. on this. So now we should return to our question. If God is so good, why is the world so bad and life so hard? Is God good? Yes, he is. Is he powerful? Yes, he is but he also gave us authority. So to understand and to reconcile God's goodness and power with the brokenness of the world, we need to understand the difference between causation and permission. Causation is when I make something happen. Permission is when I let things take the course that they chose. I didn't cause it, and I don't make it happen, but I know it's going to. My favorite illustration of this is when my brother Jason was two years old, my dad put a wood-burning stove into our house, and Jason, he was two years old, he, he wanted to touch the stove. But obviously, when we had a fire going, that would hurt him. And my mom and dad, I remember them fighting about this. Mom wanted to build a wall, prevent Jason from touching it altogether. He couldn't get near it, and dad wanted to build a low fire one that would burn but not scar for life. And then dad wanted to, while that fire was going, instruct Jason not to touch the stove. It's hot. It'll burn you. Don't touch it. Jason touched the stove. And he got a minor burn that healed quickly. There's no permanent damage. Dad didn't grab his hand. He didn't put it in the fire. Dad did not make Jason touch the stove. But he did know that Jason was going to do it. That's the difference between causation and permission. So if God is good and powerful, why not prevent all pain and suffering? That's the ultimate charge that so many people lay against God. If you're really there, if you're really loving, if you really care, why not remove the reality of pandemic death and deep national division and mistreatment and abuse and poverty and violence and wildfires and hurricanes and on and on we could go with our list. You know, that's really the question. Why doesn't God just remove all of it? Yeah. You know, like just even the possibility of something bad happening. And for me, what I don't know what the alternative would be. That would be, I mean, if, if all of those things were to be removed, then there would be, there would be no free will mm -hmm. in, in it. We would just be a bunch of automatons just out there, just running a base program and not interacting in a way that, that allows us to be free beings. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the language of uh, causation and permission kind of really helps to help, makes it easier to wrap your brain around, you know? Um, it goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning of this discussion. God doesn't cause bad things to happen, but on occasion he does permit them mm -hmm. to. Then the question is, well, why does he do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and I think, I think, I think at times it's so we can learn. So we can learn, uh, based on choices we make of our own free will, what, what happens, you know, mm -hmm. what's the fallout? Um, and how can we approach it differently the, the next time? If, if we didn't have the, the free will or the ability 
to make decisions that put us in situations like that. I don't know how we would ever learn anything or why we would need to, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I really liked his uh, analogy there that he used about his brother. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I've, I could recognize where I've done that as as a dad with my with my children like mm -hmm. i know i know both of my girls extremely well i know who's going to listen whenever i say to do something and who's who's probably not and is going to go <laughs> test it out yeah. out for themselves and i know that that's just the only way she's going to learn yeah. <laughs> is you know don't go and, and do this thing well i can tell you right now she's going to go do that thing and just like his dad knew that his brother was going to do that. Yeah. And I mean, it's the it's the same in leadership. I don't have yeah. kids, but it's the same in leadership. Uh, you can tell people all day, you know, I don't think this is a good idea. I think you should do it this way. But they got to try it for themselves. Yeah. Some people just aren't going to, they aren't going to learn it from hearing it out of my mouth. So you just got to let them go try it themselves and learn the lesson that way. And and I think it's also an important important point to make. Like we're not just dealing with the, the bad decisions of just us and those around us we're dealing with generation upon generations yeah. of of bad things that have happened that that lead to people being hardwired the way they are to do things the way they are but what the freedom that we have in Christ is we don't have to be a slave to those things right even if the bad things are happening or we find ourselves just in a bad environment mm -hmm. there is a better way that we can go and I think that's just something that should be be noted as we as we get ready to look at our next clip yeah agree so check this out Jesus asked the why question that many people say should never be asked. Why, God? Why did you leave me? Why did you abandon me? Why did you forsake me? He asked it because that's how he felt. Jesus was not just God. He was God, but he was also human like you and me. He could breathe. He could bleed. He could die. He could also hurt. And in his humanity, he had to relate to God the Father just like you and I do. Sometimes we feel God close by and sometimes we don't. And this is really important because if Jesus was allowed to ask why, well, we can too. Why is not an expression of heresy or some kind of verbal sin? It's an expression of honesty. In our humanity, sometimes we feel like God has taken off, like he's left the scene, like he's jumped ship. Where was God when I needed him most? Where is he when we need him most? If you've ever felt that way, well, you can relate to how Jesus felt because that's exactly what he was going through. But for Jesus, it's even worse than it is for you and me because he had spent his entire life with God. And now in his worst moment, the moment when he needed God the most, it seems like this is the moment God takes a break. But there's a critical life-changing, life-altering message here for all of us, the one that ought to dramatically affect us and the way that we relate to God, particularly in challenging times, the way that we relate to each other even. Jesus affirms how he feels. He names it. He doesn't deny his feelings or pretend they don't exist. He cries out his feeling of abandonment for all to see, for us to hear and talk about today. And yet, he had long before this moment settled on his faith. He had a firm, rock-solid belief, something that he knew to his core, that whether he felt the presence of God or not, God was still working. He knew that God was going to do something through Jesus' faith that was powerful. He knew it, even if he didn't feel it. So whether he felt the presence of God or not, he knew he was still working. You know, I don't know if you've ever read The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. It's a mm -hmm. fascinating book written by written from the point of view. He, he wrote The Chronicles of Narnia, yeah. all those books. He writes it from the point of view of a upper level bureaucrat demon giving advice to a I think it's a junior tempter <laughs> or or something like that and he's trying to lead um they they've got somebody picked out that that guy is and he's charged with going out and leading this guy astray and capturing a soul and all this stuff but his uncle screw tape who's the upper level bureaucratic demon he makes this he makes this point at no time is our, is our cause, like the cause of the evil ones, uh, more in danger than whenever a follower of Jesus looks around, sees no evidence of him, and still continues to obey. Hmm. And I, I love that point that no matter what you're going through, no matter how dark it seems, 
it's okay to to name your feelings, to go to God with what you're feeling, but you can rest assured in your faith and you have to have this just settled in your whole core that God is still at work and you are not alone. Yeah. I think that clip kind of illustrates to me the answer to the question we talked about a minute ago, why does God permit certain things to happen? I think through those experiences we can come to better know his character mm-hmm. and grow our relationship with him. One of the things Brian said was, why is an expression, what, the word why, questioning why, is an expression of honesty towards God. Mm-hmm. You Like, if you're kind of keeping a veil between you and God, if you're trying not to let God see everything you're feeling, um, everything you're experiencing, then you're not going to ask why. Yeah. You're going to, you might say, it's not my position to ask God why. Um, I, I don't, maybe I don't deserve to ask God why, but... Being able to ask God why is a, is a sign that you have a real, intimate, honest relationship with him. And I think, ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what he wants us to do, is to continue growing in that direction. And it and it's an acknowledgement that he is there. Yes. Yep. Like, just the, just the fact that you're questioning and talking to him at all mm-hmm. is, is a recognition that, of your soul, like the, like that, that eternal divine essence, that part of you that he put in you. Mm-hmm. It is reaching out and seeking him and just saying, why? And yeah. It's just that acknowledgement that God, I'm not alone. So even if, as long as you're talking to him yeah. and, and you're carrying on with him and, and, and going deeper in that relationship with him, despite what you're going through, there's an opportunity there for it to either break the system that's been in place that is responsible for your suffering. It's a, it's a, could be a painful lesson that you're learning to, to not do this to other people but there can be something good can come from it. Yeah. Um, as dark and as crappy as it may be. Mm-hmm. Like and you don't have to do it alone. Right. Like Jesus even surrounded himself with folks. And Job, as misguided as those folks were, <laughs> yeah. like he had he had a crew. Mm-hmm. Um, so just surround yourself with people whenever you are going through something. So that way whenever you do feel alone, you've got some folks with you that will help carry you through it. And I think, you know, if there's anybody who could have felt like they needed to to march through whatever they were going for by themselves, it's Jesus. I mean, mm-hmm. he he was God. Um, but even he, in his darkest moment, went and asked God why and had that connection to say, to ask, to ask why, to be to be honest. So I think we can model that ourselves, you know. And and that's why I love, I think praying the Psalms is extremely yeah. helpful. Not just that one, but you can go through and look at it and see a wide range of human emotions and feelings and, and circumstances where suffering and just generally bad things was happening and how to go to God with them. And if you pray them regularly, it, it'll increase your vocabulary and just the range of things that you feel comfortable going to God with. Yeah. And kind of covers all four buckets that we yes. talked about earlier. You know, remorse for things I've done, um, strength for things I'm facing right now. Um, it's all it's all there. So, yeah. And all right. Closing thoughts. This was a good conversation. Yeah, I liked this one. Um, yeah, I, I just think, you know, kind of, I'll reiterate the point that that causation and permission language is really sticking in my brain. Um, God doesn't cause the bad things in our lives. He he on occasion permits them. And mm-hmm. it's so we learn not to touch the stove. And so we can grow closer to him and know that he's there walking through whatever it is with us. And for me, probably just have the conversation with God. If you're going through something, just be open and honest and just say, God, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm experiencing. God, show me if this is something that I'm responsible for. Show me where I can make amends. If this is the cause of someone else and it's not clear, like, what can I do to, to fix that relationship or, or just to make this stop and to just make something good come from it? Just identify where you are at in it, if you are, and, and just be honest with him yeah. about what you're feeling. And surround yourself with people, whether they're – hopefully they're a little bit better than Job's pals, but surround so. yourself with people that can help support you throughout the way. Yeah. yeah. All right. We hope that uh, you guys enjoyed – this discussion leave us uh some some comments or reviews we'll send you a mug like i mentioned earlier if you don't have a bible uh let us know we'll get you one and you can also download the U version one on your phone as yep. well yep all right god bless
Thanks for joining us for The After Chat. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To be the first to hear our next episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button and get notifications for new content. You can also follow us on social media on Instagram at PCC Wired and Facebook at Passion Community Church. For additional resources and links, check out the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on The After Chat.